having trouble. I'm having trouble. I. I, I, I think it's because I, I, I'm having trouble understanding. Uh, there's a piece of the puzzle missing. I, I do better when I understand things, how things happen. And George, my George, the boy I knew, the boy I raised, my boy, would never have joined the army. So I'm trying to understand. I'm trying to understand that piece of it. I'm trying to understand why Georgie wasn't at work that day why he was on his way to my house to tell me he joined the army in wartime. I don't understand. And Dr. Weber said I should talk to you. Mrs. O'Malley, I didn't know him like you knew him. I didn't know him long. But he had tremendous potential as a trauma surgeon. He, he was very fast on his feet. And he could, think and act simultaneously under intense pressure. He had tremendous potential. And you know, he was impatient. He wanted to become better, faster. He wanted to save more lives. He was good. And he was thoughtful and generous. And I think in the end, I think, I think he was heroic and noble. And I liked him very much and i think he gave you good reason to be very very proud isn't that the girl that george saved oh manda yeah what is she doing here oh she sits there every day all day for god's sakes where, where, what? Get up. I mean it, get up. Get up! Now go get a life. I can't. George was a surgeon. He had a purpose. He wanted to save lives, and now he doesn't get the chance. Now he doesn't get the chance to do anything anymore, but you do. You could go to medical school, you know? You could hang out with your freaking friends. I don't care what you do. Just go do something with your life, because you have one. You lived. You lived, and George didn't. And I know, I... I know that that feels horrible and shocking and terrifying. But you lived. So go live your freaking life. I, I don't know how. Nobody does. Nobody knows how. But God, have enough respect for George to figure it out. Because if I see you sitting on this bench ever again, I will kick your ass from here to Sunday. Just, uh, I wanted to make sure that you're okay. Are you okay? I uh, injured my spleen, and they're just waiting to see if it stops bleeding on its own. Good. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad you seem, well, you seem better, and I'm glad. Anyway, I should, uh, I should go. I'm not really supposed to be here, so. Oh, it's, it's all right. They, they got me in restraints. I wouldn't be able to hurt you even if the voices told me to. It's a joke. <sighs> Schizophrenia humor. <sighs> um, there's this thought that I, I'm, I'm trying to get it out, and um, I keep thinking that they planted a camera uh, in my stomach during the ultrasound, and. I was going to wake my mother and, and have her in, top me down, but 
She's tired. And... Here is your spleen. See? And this uh, this bright spot right here, that's that's blood. That's not supposed to be there. But, um, no camera. No camera? Mm-mm. I can leave this up if, if you want, so that when the thoughts come back, you, you can look and you can see that, that they're not real. They're just scary thoughts. They're not real. fired. I've done a lot of really dumb things today, including pulling your medical files. Lexi, just listen. I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to have to come to you for anything, ever. So I thought if I looked up your blood type and it was the wrong one, then that would be it. Then I could just stop thinking about it. But I can't, because you have his blood. And I know that he's not your dad. I know that he was never there for you. And I'm not, I would never ask you to give him anything. He doesn't deserve a thing from you. He doesn't. But he's, he's gonna die, Meredith. And so I'm asking you to give something to me. I'm asking, I'm asking you to give me my dad because as crappy as he was to you, I, he was wonderful to me. He never missed a single dance recital. He was there at my fifth grade graduation, and what is that? That's not even real. I know he's not your dad. I, I know that. But somehow, you have his blood, and I don't. So I'm asking you, Give me my dad. <laughs> Most people think that I was named for the state, but it's not true. I was named for a battleship the USS Arizona. My grandfather was serving on the Arizona when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and he saved 19 men before he drowned. Pretty much everything my father did his whole life was about honoring that sacrifice. I was raised to be a good man in the storm, raised to love my country, love my family, and protect the things I love. When my father, Colonel Daniel Robbins of the United States Marine Corps, heard that I was a lesbian, he said he only had one question. I was prepared for. How fast can you get the hell out of my house? But instead, it was, are you still who I raised you to be? My father believes in country the way that you believe in God. And my father is not a man who bends, but he bent for me because I'm his daughter. I'm a good man in a storm. I love your daughter, and I protect the things I love. Not that I need to. She doesn't need it. She's strong and caring and honorable. And she's who you raised her to be. It's not the doctors you're treating. They're all good doctors. I know that. What do you think this was for? 
For Jennings, it was about legal. But this was for me. I needed to know who finally was responsible. At least I was able to do that. <sighs> Say it, Derek. Maybe it's not one doctor. Maybe it's too many doctors who don't know each other and who don't trust each other. When I got to that room, it was chaos. Because that's the system now. Chaos. That has been the system that has been in place since this merger. Your system. I'm saying you should look again at who's responsible. Should I be offended? Because I've been trying to come up with a good reason why you paged every resident to the skills lab but me. Me. Your sister. Your sister, Derek. But you're on my service. Little Gray, I didn't page you because I have another job for you. You gave me the idea, actually. I need somebody in the OR who's going to remind me to take breaks, to bend my legs, to drink water. I will be your patient, essentially. You want me to be your doctor? If Dr. Sloan's OK with you giving up his services, of course. You love me. And this is a once-in-a-lifetime tumor. Go get your uh, rogue on. See, it's the skin-to-skin -skin contact. The baby can feel your warmth better, sense your heartbeat better. Oh, yeah, see that? The baby's own heart is picking up in response. Karev, what are you doing? Yeah, he's saving a baby's life, that's what. Dr. Bailey, I... Oh, no shirt. He's wearing no shirt. Have you started the lactate yet? Bailey made me. Is this the roof of the calendar shoot? I was told it was downstairs. Yeah, all right, that's enough. Everybody out. Let Karev do what he's doing in private. What is he doing exactly? Out. Out. I am not having an affair with your husband. I saw the way you handled him just now. I did not handle him. I, there was no handle. We work together. You spend every waking moment together. You finish each other's sentences. You read each other's minds. You're more married to that man than I am. Yeah, but that's just because they're husband and work wife. Excuse me? The chief's your work husband, and you're his work wife. And you look out for each other. You take care of each other. There's nothing wrong with it. It's like being slum. Excuse me? Nobody's talking to you. He's my work husband, but he has a girlfriend. And I have a girlfriend, but. There's nothing going on between us. Well, I mean, there was at one point. You're not helping. Neither one of you are helping. Adele. I promise you there's nothing going on. Something is going on because he hasn't been in his bed all week. What? Really? The last time he acted like this, disappearing, sleeping at the hospital every night, he was with Ellis Gray. He may not be having an affair with you. He's not. I promise you. I promise you. He's not. Okay, but wife, wife to work, wife? Someone in this hospital is sleeping with our husband. Dr. Sloan? Yeah. Hi. Um, so this is a little weird, but um, my name is Sloan Riley and uh, my mom's Samantha Riley, and um, I'm pretty sure you're my dad. Procedure went well. You're gonna be back on your feet in no time. Great. Great. You're scared to play. You thought you were done. And when I said you'd be back in the game next season, you panicked. Um, I used to be able to block out the fear. 
You know, but ever since Des was born, I'm, I'm on that field, my heart starts racing. I can't catch my breath. You now look at guys who played their whole careers. They hit so many times they can barely remember their own names. You know, I'm scared he's gonna grow up without a dad. You know, I'm scared all the time. It's a natural reaction. Your father. Why don't you retire? <laughs> Two years into a pro career? I, mean, I can't. I, mean, I know I'm not a soldier in Iraq or, or a rocket scientist or any kind of real hero. I, mean, I know I'm just some big, dumb jock. I mean, but I'm a big, dumb jock the entire city and roots for. The kids, guys on the street. I, mean, I can't let them down. This is the trade off. I get hit. Mm. I mean, some guys can't even feed their families, you know? I mean, some guys are soldiers in Iraq. And they get shot at. So, so I'm not complaining. I'm just... I'm scared of the hits. I, mean, I want to be able to remember who my kid is. Arizona thought some work might take your mind off your itching. Scratching will take my mind off itching. Take off my gauze paws. She said that you'd say that and then I should say no. So, how about we start with the tibial plateau fracture room 2240? Hey. Hey. I'm an attending, you're a resident. As your superior, I'm ordering you to take them off. She said that you would say that too, and technically I'm on her service today, so she's my boss, not you. We have the Liz Frank fracture, room 2211. Please, mm -hmm. let me scratch just for no. five minutes. Just It'll right. scar. I don't care. I don't care. The scars are hot. The scars are badass. The scars are poetic. I'm begging you, little Gray. No, and please don't call me little Gray. I'm in pain. Down in the core of my being, pain. I'm going crazy, pain. Scary. Will this ever go away, pain? Do, do you get that? Do, do, do you know what I do? You know what I mean when I, when I when I say that? Because this pain is need to scratch an itch. That I, I can't scratch the pain of a thousand itches, and it's making me crazy. Not funny, crazy. It's bad, crazy. Okay, it's dark, crazy. It's making a suit out of someone else's skin, crazy. Okay, pain, little gray, pain. I had sex with Alex. I had sex with Alex, which I regret okay, completely because I'm in love with Mark, I think. But I'm scared that I can't handle the daughter and the baby and that Mark's gonna be a grandpa thing. Why are you telling me this? I am in pain too, is what I am saying. I get your pain. Don't you see that? I do feel your pain because I am in pain too. I have pox between my butt cheeks. Your pain does not begin to compare to mine. Okay, out. Just out! Out, 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 out! <sighs> Burke was, uh... He took something from me. He took little pieces of me. Little pieces over time. So small, I didn't notice, you know? He wanted me to be something I wasn't and I made myself into what he wanted. One day I was me, Christina Yang, and then suddenly I was lying for him and uh, jeopardizing my career and uh, agreeing to be married and wearing a ring and being a bride. Until I was standing there in a wedding dress with no eyebrows and I wasn't Christina Yang anymore. And even then I would have married him. I would have. I lost myself for a long time, and now that I'm finally me again, I can't. I love you. I love you more than I love Burke. I love you. And that scares the crap out of me because when you ask me to ignore Teddy's page, you took a piece of me. And 
I let you. And that will never happen again. When she first started coming in, before they met, we had a little game. She would try anything we served. She was adventurous, fearless. When she'd gone through the menu, I challenged the chefs to come up with something new. It became, she became my favorite part of the week. And one night she came in with him. She felt like this was a safe place for a first date. <laughs> that ring on her finger. The night he proposed to her, I placed it in the creme brulee for her to find. I watched her say yes from the kitchen window. And they never stopped coming in. But now he orders for her, same thing every time. For 15 years, I've watched their conversations grow shorter and shorter. Until now, all they do is eat. She has no children. If he dies, she'll be... She'll be all alone. She's so afraid, I, I can see. And all I want to do is take her hand in mine and tell her she'll be all right. She'll never have to be alone if she doesn't want to be. You'll let me know when you have good news about Mr. Banks, yes? Yeah, right, of course. It is my job to make sure that my residents are supported and treated with respect. Of course, and I'm uh, so sorry. You have said enough for one day. Sorry. It's my job. So we're going to sit here with you wearing that terrified look on your face for a respectable amount of time so that Dr. Balo and her friends can assume you're having your behind handed to you on a platter. You're gonna make a hell of a surgeon, Dr. Bailey. Lose a smile. Well, the patient survived the surgery. Hey, uh, I'm down with a lung transplant. Oh, no. Because you slept with my girlfriend, and I find that when I look at you, I want to hit you with a brick. <laughs> that was like years ago. <laughs> Maybe, but jealousy's a green-eyed monster. And if you ask any one of my kids, I'll tell you there's no reasoning with a monster. Dude, run away before I find a brick. As my new friend, don't judge me for that. There she is, by your kidney. My heart is by my kidney? That's why it was hard to hear your heartbeat. And without a second lung in your chest cavity, your heart sort of drifted. It's called post-pneumonectomy syndrome. And the shifting caused some bronchial compression, and that's why you weren't able to breathe. I'm the biggest bitch in the world. Can you put it back where it goes? Yes, we're going to use saline implants in your chest to keep it in place. Implants? like. What they use for it. Fake boobs. You want to put... I can't have... No. What? I, I'm a guy, okay? I'm a guy's guy. Well, you won't actually see them. Yeah, but still. I mean, come on, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, how am I supposed to, you know? What? Pick up women? You mean, how do you explain your boobs to the next chick who's dumb enough to date you? Molly. Molly. Do I have a choice? Do you like to breathe? You stole my surgery right out from under me. It wasn't your surgery. It was Nelson's surgery. It's beyond Nelson's skill level, right? I mean, that's what you said. My diagnosis. 
my tumor, my debulking. Can I scrub in at least? You're on Nelson's service. If I switch you, it's gonna look like favoritism. Dr. Nelson's been given an aneurysm. You stop talking. How did it calm down? People are starting to stand. You stole my surgery. He stole my surgery. That was, um, that was our fault in there. We were speaking in shorthand. We forget sometimes that you guys are civilians and that you don't know about ballistics. No, it's not just that. It was... It's not the first time he's been... He's been... He has been through so much. It's not like he talks about it. He can't. I can't talk about it either most days, but... Owen had it worse than me. He has it worse. He's triggered right now. He's triggered, and his triggers might never go away. I mean, they'll get better over time. If you give him time, which you should, because he is in love with you. He just needs time. He needs therapy. I, I keep telling him to go to Dr. Wyatt. No, don't, don't, don't do that. He won't go if you tell him to. He's, he's very, he's a guy that way, a man. Don't ever tell him what to do. Just, just tell him how you feel. Yeah, you got to suit your kid? Uh, yeah. Where's Robbins? Uh, in there. Robbins! What's going on? Wait, two. I need two suit your kids. Uh, why is he screaming? Baby, now. Why are you? Oh, oh God, he's serious. Oh. Holy mother. Get my bag. Get my bag. Get me a clamp. <gasps> All right, another clamp. Clamp. Scissors. Is he, is he okay? Yeah. Is he good? He's great. He did great. Oh. All right. Any sounds? Not yet. Oh. Come on, baby boy. Come on. Come on, baby boy. Come on. Come on. Come on. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Here you go, Grandpa. Jamie Anders? Hi. Hi. Dr. Torres. Oh, wow. What the hell did you do to your knee? Some jackass mowed me down on my bike and then took off. Oh, uh, hit and run, that sucks. Okay, well, this is probably gonna hurt a little, but I need to get in there and see what's going on, okay? Go for it. Oh, oh no, 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 don't go for it. Oh, Sorry, you okay? Wow, this really blows. Yeah, that's one messed up patella. Plus, I'm out 20 bucks. What do you mean? My friend said there's always an upside to an injury, and I said she was on crack, and she said, watch, the doctor will be hot. I said the doctor will be old and gnarly. <laughs> and now you show up, which means I owe her 20 bucks. <laughs> we turned our back for a minute, just for one minute. Oh my God. Haley? That's the rest of heaven. Do it. I swear to God, I'll do it. No, baby, please don't. You don't believe me. Nobody does. So no, I swear to God, I'll stab myself. Haley, I'm Dr. Karev. Alex, I need you to put that down. It would kill me, right? If I stuck this in my arm, it would kill me, right? You don't want to do that, Haley. Because there's drugs in here, I would die, right? Trust me. I can help you. I'm not crazy. I know. I, I believe you. Everyone outside thinks you're crazy, but something's going on inside, and none of us understand so we need to figure out what that is and the only way we can do that is if you put that down and let me run some tests okay you promise yes Good. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. 
Shepard. No way. Yeah. No freaking way. Right? Oh my God. Oh. Okay, um, were you trying to get... No, total accident. I used the thing. Oh, so are we happy uh, about this, or are we exercising our legal right to choose? <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Congratulations. Let's hug it out. <laughs> okay. Oh, my God. Are you, are you, are you going to tell him? Have you told him? No, I just found out. Uh, tell him, Teddy. Derek. Were you going to tell him now? Yeah. Okay. How is the Teddy and Owen thing going? Oh, oh, fantastic. It's... Going great. I'm completely over it. This is very adult. I'm really proud of you, Meredith Gray. I'm proud of me too. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> hey, I hope it has its hair. Me too. It's not bad. I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Hey, stop. Stop. Uh, stop moving. <sighs> Upper left shoulder. Through and through. You're gonna be fine. What have we trying to tell you? Just let me get off. Don't even think about trying to get off this table. Do we need to irrigate, get some antibiotics on board? I'm doing work on the shoulder, or do you... Are you okay? Yeah, um, I'm okay. Are you sure? Oh my God, did you get shot? No, I didn't get shot, okay? I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But you could be in shock and not know it. Here, let, let me feel you for the... I'm... I'm okay. But there's blood spreading down your thighs. I'm, I'm having a miscarriage. We need a stapler, we need lidocaine, morphine, and, and irrigation trays. Come on, are you gonna help me or not? Let's go. 